How's it going guys? It's Kyle with the How To Guy 123 here and today I'm going to be showing you guys two methods on how to update your MSI motherboard's BIOS. These methods will work on most MSI motherboards and will work on both Intel and AMD based boards. In this video I'll be using the MSI MPG B550 Gaming Plus as an example. Two methods I'll be showing you in this video is updating the BIOS using mFlash and updating the BIOS using the flashback button on the back of the motherboard. A quick warning before we get into the tutorial. Losing power while updating your BIOS can potentially brick and damage your motherboard. Make sure you have a stable power source when updating your BIOS. Do not update your BIOS during inclement weather like a thunderstorm, tornado, or hurricane, or during any situation where you might lose power. Update your BIOS at your own risk. First I'll show you how to update the BIOS with mFlash. I recommend using this method if your PC is already up and running. First you'll need to download the BIOS update from your motherboard support page on MSI's website. The best way to find it is to google your motherboard's model and it should be the first link from MSI's website. Click on it and then click on support at the top of the page. If you scroll down you'll see a chart. Make sure that the BIOS tab is selected and below you'll see a list of all the different BIOS versions you can download. Currently my BIOS is on version 7C56 V15 and I want to update to the latest version which at the time of recording this video is 7C56 V17. Now go ahead and click the download button to download the BIOS update. I'm going to save the file on my desktop just for easy access. A zip folder with the BIOS update will download. It's not too large of a file so it shouldn't take too long to download. Now go ahead and plug in a USB flash drive into your computer. I've already done so. I recommend using a flash drive that's under 32GB for better compatibility. However, any USB flash drive should work fine. We're now going to want to format the drive, so head over to this PC, right click on your flash drive, and click format. Make sure that the file system is set as FAT32, however if your USB flash drive is over 32GB you won't have that option, so in that case choose NTFS. I then like to set the volume label as MSI, but that's totally optional. When formatting your drive you'll lose any data that's on the USB, so make sure you have it backed up before uh, formatting your drive. Now click start and Windows will format your USB flash drive. Now go ahead and open the zip folder we downloaded from MSI's website. You can open it in any extraction program you would like, but in this video I'm going to use WinRAR. I'm going to put the WinRAR window to the left side of my screen and have the file explorer for my USB open on the right side of my screen. In the zip folder there will be another folder with the name of your BIOS version. Open it and you'll see two files. You're going to want to select and drag the two files to the root of your USB, or in other words straight onto your USB and not in any folder. You can now close out of everything but at this point make sure you keep your USB plugged into your computer, do not remove it. Now go ahead and restart your computer. And just before your PC boots into Windows, press the delete key on your keyboard to boot into the BIOS. Once in the BIOS, click on mFlash and then you'll be prompted to boot into flash mode. Click on yes and your PC will boot into mFlash. Once in mFlash, under drive, you'll see a list of all the USB storage devices connected to your PC. The Kingston Data Traveler is the USB which contains my BIOS update, and the Seagate Slim is just an external hard drive I keep plugged into my PC, so I can ignore it. Select your USB drive, and then under file, you should only see one file, which is your BIOS update. Click on it, and then click yes when prompted. Your BIOS will now begin to update. The update will take a few minutes. As a reminder, remember not to shut off your PC while your BIOS is updating, to prevent damage to the motherboard. Once the update has finished, your PC will restart. You can now head back into your BIOS and you can see that the BIOS version has updated. Before I updated my BIOS, it was on version E7 C56 AMS.150 and now it's on E7 C56 AMS.170. One final thing to keep in mind is that when you update your BIOS, all your settings will be set back to default. So remember to change back all your necessary settings like enabling your XMP profile. Next I'll show you how to update your BIOS with the flashback button on the back of your motherboard. The nice thing about updating your BIOS using this method is your PC does not even need to be put together. You only need to have the 24 pin ATX power connector and the 8 pin CPU power connector from your power supply plugged into your motherboard. 
You can use this method to fix CPU compatibility on your motherboard. However, you can still update the BIOS on a fully built PC using this method. As like before, head over to your motherboard support page on MSI's website and download the BIOS version you'd like to update to. Now go ahead and plug in your USB. Once again, I recommend using a flash drive that's under 32GB for better compatibility. I've noticed that flashback is pretty picky on which USBs will work. I've had to try a few different USBs before I found one that worked for me. I had to settle on an old 1GB flash drive. We're now going to want to format the drive. So head over to this PC, right click on your USB flash drive, and click format. Make sure that the file system is set as FAT32. If your USB flash drive is over 32GB, you'll not have that option. In that case, choose NTFS. Once again, I also like to set the volume label to MSI, but that is optional. And once again, when formatting your drive, you'll lose any data that's on it, so make sure you have your files backed up before formatting your USB. So now go ahead and click on Start, and Windows will format your USB flash drive. Now go ahead and open the zip folder we downloaded from MSI's website. You can open it in any extraction program you'd like, but in this case I'm going to use WinRAR. I'm going to put the WinRAR window on the left side of my screen, and I'll have the File Explorer window for my USB open on the right side. In the zip folder, there'll be another folder with the name of the BIOS version. Go ahead and open it, and you'll see two files. Now in the File Explorer window, click View at the top of the screen, and make sure that file name extensions is checked. After that, drag only the BIOS update file to the root of your USB. So in my case, I'll drag the E7C56AMS.170 file to my USB. Make sure it's not in any folder. Now right click on the BIOS update file on your USB and click rename. Erase everything along with the file name extension and rename it to msi.rom. Windows will ask you if you're sure you want to change the file name extension. Click yes. Now you can close out of everything, eject your USB and shut down your PC. Now head to the back of your PC and plug in the USB flash drive into the port labeled flash BIOS. It will be directly below the flash BIOS button. Once your USB is plugged in, press the flash BIOS button. It's a little hard to press, so in this case, I use a pen cap to push it. The flash BIOS button LED will start blinking as it updates your BIOS. Your PC will also turn on during the update process. The whole update process takes several minutes, and when done, the flash BIOS LED will turn off and your PC will restart. You can now head back into the BIOS and you can see that your BIOS version has been updated. My BIOS is now an E7C56AMS.170. Before updating the BIOS, it was also on E7C56AMS.150. Once again, a reminder to change back all of your settings as they have been reset to default. So remember to enable things like your AXMP profile. Anyways, that brings us to the end of the tutorial. I hope this video helped. If it did, leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.